as you remember, a basis for a subspace H is an independent set that spans H. Suppose S is the set containing the vectors V1 until Vn. And suppose we define the subspace H as the span of these vectors of S. If you want to find the basis for H, we need to check whether S is independent or not. In the case, however, where S is an orthogonal set, we do not need to do that. S is automatically a basis for H. Such a basis is called, not very originally, an orthogonal basis. In this video, we will see that computing coordinates becomes much easier if you have an orthogonal basis. And not just any basis. Suppose you have a set S containing V1, V2 and V3, which is an orthogonal set with non-zero vectors. We set H to be the span of V1, V2 and V3, and then we know automatically that the basis B equals V1, Vt, V2, V3 is an orthogonal basis for H. Now let's see how we can compute coordinate vectors. Suppose you have a vector x in H. Then the coordinate vector of x with respect to b contains three weights, c1, c2 and c3, because there are three vectors in b. So that's why we need three weights. Then I can express x in terms of v1, v2 and v3. x equals c1 times v1 plus c2 times v2 plus c3 times v3. Well, normally, when you have x and v1, v2 and v3, you would have to start to do row reduction. You have to make an augmented matrix. However, if you have an orthogonal matrix basis, we can do something smarter. What we can do is the following. We take the inner product of this equation with v1. Then we get on the left-hand side x in v1. And on the right-hand side, we obtain c1 times v1 in v1 plus c2 times v2 in v1, plus c3 times v3 in v1. However, this term equals 0, because v1 and v2 are orthogonal, and this term equals 0 as well, because v1 and v3 are orthogonal. So only the first term is left, and we can solve for c1. c1 equals x in v1 divided by v1 in v1. And we can do the same for the other weights, for C2 and C3 in a similar way. So, let us look at an explicit example. Here we have our basis with three orthogonal vectors. Check this. And we have some x. Then we want to compute xb, so the weights C1, C2 and C3. So what do we have to do? C1 equals x in V1 over here, divided by v1 in v1 over here. So we have 6 plus 2 equals 8, minus 1 equals 7. And here we have 4 plus 1 plus 1 equals 6. So c1 equals 7 over 6. And then for c2, we have to do something similar. In a product between those two, equals 0 plus 2 plus 1 equals 3, divided by 1 plus 1 equals 2. So that's c2. And finally, for C3, we have the inner product of these two. 3 minus 2 equals 1, plus 1 equals 2, divided by V3 in V3. 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals 3. So there we have our weights, C1, C2, and C3, right away. We do not need to do any row reduction anymore here. And we can check our answer. Because we know x equals c1 times v1 plus c2 times v2 plus c3 times v3, where the weights are given over here, c1, c2, and c3. We have computed them. We have c1 equals 7 over 6, so plug that in here. We have c2 equals 3 over 2, so we plug it in over here. And we have c3 equals 2 over 3, we plug it in over here. And then we compute this and see whether it indeed equals the original x. Well, we ha have 
2 times 7 over 6, so 7 over 3, plus 2 over 3 equals 9 over 3 equals 3. Second component, 7 over 6 minus 4 over 6 equals 3 over 6, so 1 half. 3 over 2 plus 1 half equals 2. So that's fine. And the last one, uh, minus 7 over 6 plus 4 over 6 equals minus 3 over 6, so minus 1 half. 3 over 2 minus 1 half equals 1. And that is indeed equal to our original x. So that's the way how you can check whether you did not make any computational mistakes in the calculation somewhere.